Nobody doubts that, as confirmed by recent studies, the left dominates education. But why does it? One reason is that anyone right of centre tends to get selected out during the hiring process. But this doesn't explain how the leftists doing the hiring got their positions. Nor does it explain why there are insufficient conservative forces to fight back. A deeper reason is that bright people with balls mostly go into business, leaving academia to bright people without balls. Robert Nozick's essay, Why the Intellectuals Oppose Capitalism, suggests that growing up, the average intellectual did well in school, but not socially. That means he was rewarded for compliance to a central authority implementing a comprehensive plan within a regimented setting. He was not rewarded for decentralised, unplanned, voluntary interactions. And so, he comes to believe that society itself should be centralised, planned and regimented. Ludwig von Mises deepened this insight further in the anti-capitalistic mentality. Businessmen, athletes and entertainers get higher monetary rewards than does the intellectual, so he resents them. And he also resents his fellow citizens for not seeing the injustice of this, for not recognising his superiority. He knows best. In fact, it's unjust not only for him, but for the people too. They need his ideas. As F.A. Hayek suggests in his essay, The Intellectuals and Socialism, the average intellectual assumes the most intelligent people ought to be the ones running things. Plato's philosopher kings. Intelligent people, he adds, will tend to overvalue intelligence. And this is especially true when the intellectual is shielded from reality and has a captive audience of young, undeveloped minds assuming he's infallible. As Henri Charlier warned, a professor may be in error and so remain all his life. He can be the ruin of thousands upon thousands of minds. But he keeps his job and retires on a comfortable pension. A farmer, on the other hand, if he neglects to sow for a couple of seasons, promptly faces disaster. Hence what is called the farmer's good sense. He knows there is a nature of things and that it can never be changed. Perhaps ultimately, the leftist academic knows his claim to superiority is fragile. Hence the suppression of conservative ideas aware of the vulnerability of his arguments. He knows they cannot withstand open debate, but he is also acutely aware of the need to feel superior and in control. And let's not forget that, as Murray Rothbard noted, the leftism of intellectuals is exactly the ideology one would expect of the class of the state's professional sycophants. Or as Pushkin put it, wherever there is a trough, there will be pigs.